Where are you rich? Uh, your name, Zoran. That's not Z correct. Zoran Theodorovich. It's my parents who are from Bosnia. Ah. They are Serbians from Bosnia. I see. Okay. I, I used to know a guy who was a great guitar player. Uh, uh, Dimit. 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 Dimit was the last name? That's the first name. His last name was Simic. Simic. His name was Dimit Simic. Is that what you said? I, if I remember right, yeah. I only played with a couple of gigs with him, but uh, I, he was he was Bosnian, and then nice oh. guy, really cool guy. What about your last name? Oh, it goes back. It's. I think it's got something to do with uh, wheel rights. You know, used to build wheels. Uh huh. Wooden wheels and stuff. They called wheel wheel rights back then. I think that's where it, and it eventually ended up just being right. So, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, our names all come from somewhere. They do. They do. Means yeah. something. Can you uh, tell us what your first concert was? Ah, uh, my first concert was the Runaways at Manchester Free Trade Hall in England, and my father took me. And how old were you? Oh. I think I was 12. And did you recall buying uh, a Runaways band t-shirt, tour t-shirt? No, I did not. Do you remember what your first band t-shirt was? Ooh. I want to say it was Thin Lizzy. That's a, that's a great first t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. First album was uh, Jailbreak. That was the first album you bought. It was indeed. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what's your most prized music collectible? Hmm. I have a gold album from Dio, and it's uh, oh, what is it? What's the album called? It was a uh, Greatest Hits, Mark of the Beast or something. But that, that I, I treasure. I've got that. And uh, instrument-wise, do you have a vast collection of drums? I I wouldn't say vast. I have, a collect, I have three drum kits and I have about eight different snare drums. Um, you know, that are used in different situations in the studio or live. Some are good for live, some are good for studio. So, yeah, I haven't got any more room for anything else. <laughs> and uh, do you have any drums that belong to maybe John Bonham? Or do you have any collectible drums like that? No, unfortunately, no. No, I'm not a great collector of... Uh, of, of uh, of drums, I must admit. And uh, what was your first car? First car? Um, I think it was a Toyota. I can't remember what make it was. I think it was a Toyota. I mean, what, you know, what kind of Toyota it was. It was a Toyota, I think. What about motorcycle? Are, are you avid? Are, do you ride? No, no, I never have. Doesn't interest me. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, and uh, what was your favorite Dio album that you played on? Ooh. Well, I'm pretty, pretty proud of all of them. I like Magica. Magica was a Dio album that we worked on. Uh, for a bit longer than normal because um, it was a concept album. But, yeah, I'd, I'd say Magica. But the other ones are just as uh, important to me. What is your favourite one that you did not play on? What is your favourite Dio record that, that you did not play on? Good question. Um, Last in Line comes to mind. That's an amazing album. So is Holy Diver, but yeah, last in line. 
What is it about that album that you like so much? Um, it's just the way the songs, uh, the way he created the songs. I mean, there's some real epic, um, some real epic songs on there. You know, like the theme song. You know, the 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 song "Lasting Line." Um, uh, and I thought the fast song too. I speed at night was a killer song. Great riff. So all pretty good on that album. And uh, what is your favorite ACDC album that you played on? Ooh. Well, again, I, 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 I you know, I'm partial to the to the three of them. Uh, but I, I'd probably say "Blow Up Your Video" is the one that. I, the one I played on. What is it about that album that makes it so? Well, um, they were all enjoyable albums, but I think that one had a little bit, a couple of little twists and turns on it in, on some of the songs, uh, which I enjoyed. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just a pretty solid album, I think. And uh, what is your favorite ACDC album that you did not play on? Power Age. Gone Shooting. Exactly. Down Payment Blues. Sin City. Killer. <laughs> what What's next at Moon? It's bloody marvelous. <laughs> and uh, I, I imagine that you only got to play a few of those songs live. Is that right? Yeah, you know, like Sin City was a standard we had in the set for a long time. What else is on Power Age that we did? Oh, we no, we didn't do Riff Raff. Um, yeah, Sin City was a standard that was mostly in the set all the time. But, but uh, yeah, I, I know Riff Raff used to be part of the um, the set during Bond, but obviously with each new album you have to take away from the old and add to the new add from the new right yeah exactly that's it i mean you can't keep playing power age you have to move on to the next record and you know obviously when i you know i didn't play with bon scott so but uh you just put a couple of you know i mean the, there were the standard songs of bonds era like let there be rock obviously and highway to hell whole lot of Rosie, they were all in there and stuff, so, and then you got put in the new stuff that you've just done. It seems like with ACDC they probably just go about putting two new ones to the set. Does that sound right, right? Yeah, it was. I mean, I think there was one, I think when we did blow, the Blow Up Your Video tour, we put in, like, I think there was like four, or we'd alternate them, um, which was more than usual. Um, but yeah, generally it's, you just put in a couple because people want to hear the the classics, you know. It's always nice as a player to play something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can only go so far with that. You you have to do the standards. I mean, you know, when you go see Dio, you want to see Holy, you want to hear Holy Diver. When you go see DC, you want to hear Highway to Hell. Or, you know, you can't, you can't not not play them. You know, <laughs> you can't get away with it. Right, <laughs> this is, it's not all about you. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to, you know, have to, you have to uh, more than more than most. You have to, you know, please the fans that come to see you. So, um, you know. You just got to, you know, digress and play those songs and stuff, which isn't a bad job, you know. They're pretty damn good songs, you know. So. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> have you adjusted to the COVID, COVID, our COVID reality? How did it immediately impact you, and have you lost friends to it? I haven't lost any friends to it. I, I, I don't know anybody who's passed away from it. Um my daughter just had it um, last month, but she's recovered. She's back at work. Um, I couldn't believe what they were, what I was seeing and reading when this thing first broke out. 
I thought, is this a freaking bad movie or what? You know, a uh, joke. Um, you know, I, it's been it's been really frustrating, it's, uh, as it probably is for a lot of musicians, but uh, there was nothing going on for months, you know. Um, but this last couple of months, um, I managed to do a couple of albums. There's a friend of mine, Stuart Smith, who has a band here in L.A. called uh, Heaven and Earth, and he called me up, and we've just uh, finished up an album. And then a couple of weeks after that, another friend of mine, Kevin Gouda, who has a band uh, of gods and monsters uh, with Ira Black on guitar, Bjorn England on bass, he said, you want to do the album? Yeah, of course. I've got nothing else to do. No, he's, there's some really great songs on there. So um, <clears throat> this last couple of months has been been a bit busy, which is good, you know, because there was nothing going on for months. I think a big part of the problem with all this is the internet, because the amount of, excuse my French, for bullshit that's out there. So, you know, you just got to pick and choose what you want to think, what you want to read and believe and what you don't. How much of what you are being told is most likely true, what have you experienced that was false? Oh, I, you know, I, well, you know, there's stuff out there that you that you read and it's from a so-called reliable source. Um, and it looks like one, but it's just, a, you know, it's just a, a load of propaganda being made up, you know? And it's somebody's idea, it's not fact. And then, You've got Facebook where they've got fact check checkers, you know, and then you've got Disney being rated R, the Muppet Show. I mean, what the? It's just insane. The media is sucks. I know you're on Facebook, and uh, I believe uh, uh, you were sharing your thoughts about um, the current California leader. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I I, use, I try not to. I try, I really try not to, to say anything because I don't think it's my part to say anything. You know, I'm a musician and I'm basically here to entertain people. If you post something like that, I don't think it's very entertaining. You know, but facts are facts. And I think I did post it and I took it down because I don't like to post, I don't like political conversations on on, on my Facebook page. And I can appreciate people's opinions, but this, you know, governor, <laughs> doing me a favor. Anyway, have you uh, have you blocked and unfriended, and have you been blocked and unfriended uh, by I, a posting? I have never blocked anybody, but somebody blocked me the other day, and that's the first time it happened. That's the power of Facebook, you know unfriending someone what a wuss you know try talking to me you know asshole we're not all meant to be friends on facebook maybe no, in a re maybe in real life where um cooler heads can prevail C cooler heads will prevail that's a, that's the end of the day face to yeah. face well yeah i mean you know that's how it used to work didn't it in the school you know even at school you sort you sort your shit out and get it sorted. Not anymore. Everyone's such warriors on Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you are currently living. You're originally from uh, the Man uh, suburb of Manchester. Is it Oldham? Is that how it's pronounced? Well, I was. It, that's how it's pronounced. I was born in Oldham, but I lived in a place called Failsworth, which isn't far away. Um, in Manchester, yeah. And now you, uh, are, are you, have you lived in Los Angeles for quite some time? Yeah, a long time, about, ugh, I, I don't know, when I moved here, 88? It's about 38 years, long time. And I imagine being from England, uh, the weather of uh, Los Angeles is quite appealing. It certainly is. I mean, I do miss England and it's all its, um, its glories, but... Uh, you know, this weather is a lot more uh, palatable. <laughs> what else do you like about where you live? And uh, what foreign countries are comparable to home? 
Oh, it, it's yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I just like this kind of a bit more of a freedom. Um, I always felt a little bit constricted in Manchester, even though it was my beloved hometown. I mean, I I still miss it, but um, and England, a lot of things about England. But uh, you know, here is where um, this is where my music my music industry is you know where i where i can work and i've got a network of friends and and stuff and it uh seems to keep me going there's not much of that with regards to the kind of music that i play going on in uh as far as i can see anyway in uh in in england now you were in acdc during the 80s the heyday of hard rock and heavy metal uh, what kind of excesses were you a party to or at least uh, a spectator, debauchery, and a naughty behavior. Oh, no, no, no. There's none of that went on. No, no. You, you must have the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, it was funny one time. We we had, um, uh, we were, we were, this, uh, uh, serial killer was going around called Richard Ramirez and apparently they put an ACDC cap on in his bedroom or something and they were trying to chase him and you know so the press wanted to talk to us about it you know and our manager um, had, you know said don't talk to them don't say anything it's all rubbish you know it's got nothing to do with the band so yeah we'd be coming out and we'd have a cup of tea and out the back stage store and there'd be all these cameras flashing and news crews and you know what do you think about Satan you know and it's like I've got a half of eaten piece of eaten pizza and a cup of tea you know I'm like um you know do we really look like Satanists I mean the whole thing was ridiculous you know now uh, at what point did you realize you had enough of ACDC and how long did it take for you to actually leave and was there much second guessing? Uh, there was no second guessing. Um, um, it happened around '88 when we finished, and uh, you know I was becoming a bit complacent with the whole thing, and you know my playing and stuff. You know, money was amazing, but when you're, you know, a player, and that's what you love doing, it was a bit difficult to. Uh, you know, ACDC's music is is pretty straightforward, and there's not much room for you to um, to expand on things. And that kept preying on me. I decided I needed to, I just needed to do something else. You know, I'd been in the band about seven and a half years, and did quite a lot of touring. And and it's nothing to take away from ACDC. They're amazing, as we all know. They, they, you know, and I have every respect for them. But uh, yeah, I think. Um, when I finally, when things ended, it, it took didn't take that long actually. There's only two or three months before, um, you know, I got involved with Ronnie and uh, his new band. So um, there wasn't a much of a time gap in in between that. Thank God, because I really wanted to get on and do something else. So, yeah. Did you ever overplay in ACDC and have to be told to you know calm down a little bit? No. You knew your role and you st you knew what your job was and you stuck to it like a good employee. Well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, I, I obviously I, I analyzed, analyzed, I suppose that's not the right word. I, I, I took a long look at the band and how they do things and stuff and, you know, you can't really go in there putting drum fills everywhere because it, that just does, that's not their style. It, they just want someone who's who's pretty much straight ahead. So I, I pretty much stuck to that. It looks like your first tour dates with Dio were opening for Metallica in the Rhine. Did that sound about right? I I do remember. Playing some shows with Metallica, yeah, but I, I don't think I can't remember if those were the first shows. Uh, according to the the website, says it is. 
Oh, okay. Well, then it's probably right. It was such a long time ago. In the UK with trouble and uh, North America with the uh, Ingve Mamstein, the rising force. How familiar were you with Metallica, the, the thrash scene, or even New Wave and punk rock? And do you, do you dance? <laughs> I don't dance. I play drums. <laughs> now, um, yeah, oh, of course, I, I, I enjoy lots of music. There are lots of different kinds of music, you know. But my favourite, obviously, is what I play, you know, heavy metal, heavy, heavy rock, whatever you want to call it. And I knew Metallica and stuff. You know, it wasn't, um, you know, they're a great band, you know. I mean, that kind of music, uh, you know, t uh, it takes a lot out of you, too, you know. How familiar are you with the death metal drummers and uh, the 300 beats per minute crowd? Not very familiar. I I do know I have I had a quite a long chat with Dave Lombardo one time. We were doing a charity event. Um, I said, "How do you play like that?" He said, "Coffee." So I'm like, oh, "Oh, okay, that's it." Yeah. And um, no, I'm not very familiar. I, I to be honest with you, I, I'm not I'm not fond of that kind of drumming. I find it very uh, you know. People, I don't know. I don't think people can dance to that. <laughs> well, as what as what we both think is dancing, uh, you know. Talk about the live album we released. I must be excited about that. Uh, was London and New York was London and New York always the biggest markets for Dio? No, no, no. They were, you know, we would do well in Brazil and South America as as well, and. Um, you know the the rest of Europe was always good. Um, yeah, it was, um, those particular shows in the capitals, it's always um, there's always more press there, and there's always more friends and stuff like that. You know, friends is okay, you know, but um, I do remember both both shows. You know, one in New York, one in London, lots of people and. You know, you you have to break away a little bit and pull the show, you know, and just get your head together and, you know, because there's cameras everywhere and it's going to be recorded live and you better not mess up, you know. <laughs> so you got to kind of remove yourself a little bit and, you know, contain yourself, get ready. But uh, they're the brilliant albums. I mean, those are two great shows. I remember the band being really tight. On, on both occasions, really comfortable, and uh, we were throwing stuff in, you know, and Ronnie was singing his ass off, and, you know, it's a great collection of songs, you know, and to do, <coughs> excuse me, to do the whole of Holy Diver, too, was um, was was a great, very pleasurable, you know, playing some of those songs we'd, um, we'd never really played before, like Invisible and I don't think we played that before. That was never in the set. Caught in the middle. So that was great doing that, you know, and uh, um, we just had the Killing the Dragon release on the other live from New York. And um, so there's some of the Killing the Dragon album on there, like Push and Killing the Dragon and Rock and Rolls on there. That's from uh, Killing the Dragon. And then we got to play a uh, couple, three or four songs from Magica too, which was always cool. And there's a nice tribute too on the on the inner sleeves. Um, the album's dedicated to the memory of Moray McMunn, who was our sound engineer for quite a long time. Scottish guy, really cool guy. So yeah, good memories, you know. Uh, talk a little bit about working with uh, Michael Schenker. I hear you are. A big UFO fan. I uh, working with Michael in in UFO. I was in UFO from ninety five to uh, the middle of ninety eight, and we did a we did a whole lot of touring. Touring with Michael was amazing. I mean, you know, um, we always got along well. There was never a problem, um, and obviously it was a a great honor to be, you know, in UFO and with the other guys too. You know, it was the original UFO with Michael and uh, 
and and little old me. So, <coughs> you know, um, it, it was a good time. I mean, obviously, the you know there were there were some inner problems between Michael and the rest of the band, which which went pretty deep. But I didn't know you know anything about it, or you know, I just got on with things. You know, we did do some fantastic shows, though. I must admit. It was a great time, and they're a great band. So did uh, Mike? Did Michael uh, open open himself up for a little bonding uh, with you? <laughs> Not very much. No, no, no. He used to call me the chimney because I used to smoke a lot. So no, you know, he he would travel separate from us um, on most occasions. You know, so we would. You know, we wouldn't be hanging out a hell of a lot. But you know, he was he was fine with me. I never had a problem with him. We were all there in the room for our mom when they pulled the plug, and it was unreal to watch her die. Uh, it must have been similar for you with Ronnie, I imagine. Yeah, probably was. Yeah. I wasn't in the room, but I got a phone call. I was with his son, and uh, I uh, had to tell his son. They weren't extremely close, but it was still not the. It was still a horrible thing to do, and obviously you have to do that when you're feeling really horrible. So, yeah. Well, I don't mean to end the interview on a on a on a bad note. Just the death is just uh Oh, it's okay. In, it's an inevitability. And uh it's a, it's a it's a powerful experience as well. It's true, you're right. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it it's difficult but you know, we've got we've got all the good memories and uh it's just an, an, you know, it's a big thing, but it's a big thing that everyone has to go through at some point. Do you have any uh, final thoughts that you'd like to share with uh, the, uh, your fans and or people listening to this on Metal God Radio? Just, just stay safe, stay healthy, use your common sense, and hopefully we'll see you out on the road somewhere. Um, and uh yeah take care all the best <laughs>